Hello, welcome to the New Stack Makers, a podcast where we talk about at scale application development, deployment, and management. John Daniel Trask is the CEO of Raygun. In this interview, JD, as he goes by, talks a lot about what it takes to make great software. He's been making software for 25 years, and so we had a lot to talk about, in particular, how air monitoring plays a role in its new APM platform that Raygun recently launched. We look forward to working more with Raygun. They're now a sponsor of the new stack. We want to welcome them. We want to thank all of our sponsors at the new stack for making our work possible. Thank you very much. So let me know when that's uh, coming through for you. We got it. Yeah, there it cool. is. So keep in mind, uh, we're, we're going out today with the beta. So there's every opportunity here that things could go wrong <laughs> while I'm clicking around. Um, I will jump uh, back to here uh, to start with. So you don't mind. I'll, I mean, I'll, I'll talk a little bit to what we're looking at here. Um, so firstly, you'll see up here, this is tracking uh, a website called Mindscape. Um, and so that we call this our application switcher. And this is to what I was talking about earlier, this idea that uh, we want you to be thinking in terms of your applications and not necessarily so much about your physical infrastructure. And so in here, you can see I've got these different apps, including tracking my own, own blog. Um, and then in the sidebar here, we've kind of got the, the products that are integrated with this application. So you can see we've got crash reporting, real user monitoring, and now we have um, APM. That's the new piece today. And I think a lot of your audience are probably fairly familiar with what APM is about, um, you know, tracking the, the um, performance of your application. It's typically focused on the server side, what's the app actually doing. And so you can see in here, uh, this is the overview tab in here. We're looking at an app deck score, what it's our um, requests looking like, so how much time is going into database queries versus the code versus API calls. Um, you can see slow requests. Um, all sorts of data. I don't want to like run through every little piece in here. Um, and this is also powered by our uh, custom dashboarding tool. So if you click on edit this, we can actually go through and we can add different tiles that we'd like. Uh, we can also resize these things. Uh, we oh, can throw them away, change the names, do whatever we want. Um, and so that's that's something that's been really cool uh, for the last uh, year or so. We've had this custom ability to build these dashboards, which um, which people seem to love. So that's the the overview level. But one thing that we're doing that's quite different, and folks uh, hopefully notice that it's different to a lot of the classic APM tools, is what we talk about as being issues. And so issues, pass on that. Issues is about uh, today we see folks that put in APM products and then they will kind of go, hey, somebody said something was broken or it got slow. And so they then go and start looking at charts and they're looking things, they're trying to tease out what the hell happened. You know, what was the issue? And so with, with Raygun APM, what we said was, why don't we build out some rule sets that automatically are going to create issues for you so that you can understand and assign them to team members and also uh, then track the progress on improving these performance issues. So it makes it much, much more action orientated rather than trying to read the tea leaves of some charts. Why don't we just tell you, hey, this, you know, this page or this method is really bad. And some of the rules that we've got in here, I'll just open this in a new tab. Um, you can see in here, there's standard ones like if there's a particularly slow trace. Um, the ones I like is automatic detection of N plus one queries. Um, noticing that if you're calling a third party API a whole lot, stuff like that, that would typically be a, a, you know, a, a performance smell uh, when, you're, when you're trying to improve the quality of your software. That's, that's pretty cool um, and a bit different. But uh, yeah, I'll just jump through here. And um, through these other tabs, you know, you can go through and look for things and hunt them. We've got our standard filtering. Um, but the traces to me is, um, whoops, not that one, this one here. The trace is really where the rubber hits the road. So right. in this view here, you can see it's nice and colorful, much nicer for the, the audience to be looking at. Um, and so this has captured this, this trace of a web request here on a demo site. Um, you can see here we're overlaying our error data as well. So if there were errors, we could click straight through to the Raygun crash report about it. 
And you can see here that we've got all the methods that we're firing. You can see that this is a third-party uh, API call to Zero, an accounting system. You can track over here and see the database queries that are firing. Now, this already is starting to look like we've got an N plus one in there. We shouldn't see so many queries to the user table over and over again. And on the side, we've kind of got this summary saying, you know what, there were 55 database queries triggered on this. Uh, one external API call, my code. And you can also see the time in there. It might be a little hard for people on the, the screen share. And then what you can also do is um, is click on these things. I haven't hooked it up to, to GitHub at the moment. I'll see if I can... I'll leave it alone. But it will bring in the um, the source code so that you can actually see the source code for the methods that you're clicking on to, to see, oh, okay, that's what was happening in here. That might be why it's really slow, that sort mm, of thing. Okay. So that's pretty... Pretty powerful stuff for connecting all of the parts of your your development environment. So your source code, your server side, your errors, your customer experience, all in one place. What what were you guys starting to see that you needed that you were thinking about that brought that brings tracing to the to, to the front of you know of your story in many respects? I mean, error mon monitoring is really your core, but we're tracing is becoming a much more critical issue we hear about. Yeah, so the, what, what I think we're seeing in the industry as a whole is there's a lot of great tools out there in very specific niches. You right. know, So there is there are some APM tools that are good. There's some crash reporting tools that are good. There's some RUM tools that are good. And never shall these things meet. You know, And the, the, the problem is, is that to really understand the health of your software, you cannot look at these things in isolation. You actually need to see them all together. And the last thing you want to be doing is kind of going, hey, well, I've got, I've got my crash reporting in one system and my APM open. And, you know, I, I go in and, and meet with companies all the time. And that's often what's happening. They're trying to correlate between these things. And so what I think we're seeing in the industry as a whole is, firstly, it was very fragmented. Now we're starting to see some uh, roll-ups occurring. There's acquisitions occurring all the time as people are trying to build out these platforms. Right. And some folks are doing it like I say, through acquisition, we've kind of taken the, I, I guess, the, the road less traveled and said, why don't we just try and build the most integrated platform from the ground up that does share the data intrinsically between all the parts of it to give you the full view in one place? Um, you know, and, and the team ourselves, we've been finding this really, really valuable. Um, in, in fact, you know, we probably would have shipped APM a little bit earlier if it wasn't for the fact that when we were tracking our own software, the team got too excited about fixing some of the issues we were able to find ourselves. So I think where we're heading is that these days, I think crash reporting is starting to become quite a well-known commodity and an expectation within a, a professional team. APM uh, obviously is a more mature market. People kind of expect some sort of tracing. Real user monitoring, uh, you know, it's been used for a long time by large corporates. Um, and I think smaller businesses are starting to, to sort of uh, clue on to the idea that if the users are having a bad experience, that might be affecting their business. Um, and so bringing that together, I think, has been really important. So you guys talk a lot about, you know, the health, right? You were just earlier to talking about the health of of the applications. And you... Yep. Uh, you know, and so what is that philosophy that you bring that you're bringing into this product that relates more kind of like a health matter? Because, you know, I, I look at other peers and how they compare themselves. They don't talk about health as much. They they're talking about like finding those exceptions, maybe, you know, and finding, you know, the, these these issues that, you know, to help you kind of like respond to errors quickly. Um, yep. What's the difference between that and looking at it from a health perspective? Well, I think we talk about it from a health perspective because we don't I, th I think when you you focus on things like just saying, "Oh, I know that I had an error," it's almost devaluing the point of things here. This is a solution for business teams, you know for for technology companies, and more and more companies are relying on software. Uh, they are their whole business. I mean, um, and so I think kind of just focusing down on, hey, well, an engineer can do X quickly doesn't communicate the real power of these tools. Mm -hmm. It still does that, you know, mm -hmm. but you need to be, you know, what we're finding more and more, um, you know, we're selling to, to, to product managers. We're, we know of companies where they take their ray gun reports and they go in the board papers to the board of directors because mm -hmm. if the whole company is predicated on their, their software investment and that thing is getting worse or better, they need to know. 
is that can you know there are businesses that literally are dying because of of poor software. Um, So I guess that's the the kind of driver behind thinking about it more holistically as the health. The other thing that we drive through our platform as well is the idea of understanding impacted customers. And this is a little bit taken from folks like Amazon. You know, when there's an issue there and they they do a a, um, a root cause analysis, part of it is how many customers were impacted. So Raygun will actually collect that as well because I think us as software engineers, I love writing code. Right? I, I love sitting there writing code. When I'm writing code, I'm really focused on, you know, oh, you know, the aesthetics of the code and my architecture. And you know, why why do we write code? We we write code for other human beings, right? right and I th- and we forget that it's, uh, sometimes, and we right get on. really focused on the on the minutia and forget about the people. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it's a long-winded story. You might not have expected such a long answer on that, but that's that's kind of our, our conviction is we think that the whole team should be using these tools, um, different parts for different people. Um, you know, so, I mean, I'll, I'll, give, I'll just screen share again here for you. And I will try to move that thing. I jump, I think it might be this tab here. Yeah, so I mentioned the custom dashboards earlier, right? And so this is something that is becoming really, really popular with our customers is that uh, I touched on this with the overview with an APM. But here, you know, there's a TV mode on here. If we edit this dashboard, we add tiles, you can see how many different things you can put in here. So I want to understand what's my percentage of crash-free users? You know, what's the user satisfaction based on load time? You know, how many people are using my software? And you can build multiple dashboards. They're all live, so data is updating constantly. And then you can also go through and configure these things. So you can even bring in data from multiple applications. So going back to your point earlier about microservices, I may want to partition them into separate applications in Raygun, but then pull them all together into one unified dashboard that sort of thing. And so what we're finding more and more is companies are starting to put together these dashboards and put them on TVs around their office, not necessarily within engineering, right? You might have a support team where you want to show that there's been a spike in the error rate. So, you know, hey, people are starting to contact us saying they're having problems and the team can kind of eyeball it on the wall and be like, you know what, this, this, this isn't just because grandma's ringing up and doesn't know how to use the software. We're, we're clearly suffering some sort of issue right now. Um, that sort of thing. So I think, you know, software quality is, is a company-wide issue rather than just the developer issue. That's that's a story that we see emerging is this software as a company-wide issue, um, not as an IT issue, not even as a product issue. And yep. the board of directors really, you know, dictates that. And they might be using terms like digital transformation, which a developer would probably just you know, look at it and say, what are you talking about? Yep. But that's our, that filters down into more DevOps type style approaches, which we see in these tools that you guys are developing, but also in the practices of the companies that are using these tools. So it almost has like this, this kind of like cyclical effect, cyclical effect on each other. So the DevOps is affecting new continuous development. The continuous development practices are affecting how we think about DevOps practices seems like that you know these types of environments are going to be critical uh, as kind of that you know as a, as a larger market matures I totally agree and we we've sort of seen that ourselves in our own growth you know we look at what are people migrating from right and typically especially when we started with crash reporting years ago the answer was normally we're moving from nothing or we're moving from something we kind of cobbled together in-house. You know, a common one was, hey, I just wired up the exception handler to send me an email, you know, that sort of thing, which doesn't have team capabilities, reporting, grouping, all that good stuff. Um, and you're just starting to see, I think, back to right what you started this interview with, you know, there's this um, expectation now around the quality of the software that we're building. Yeah. And, you know, let's be honest, software engineers, we're expensive people to employ, you know, who you don't want to go and spend millions and millions and millions of dollars on building software only to then be like, you know, nickel and dime it right at the end and not actually care about the output. That's pretty pointless. Well, there are so many endless endpoints. Now the fabric seems to, 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 to stretch on forever. 
Um, it is infinite. And these error crashes are only going to increase. How are you preparing for the, the coming real onslaught of these major you know, changes in how we kind of are collecting data from any physical thing possible? Yeah, and just in terms of scaling? Yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting um, challenge, you know, you know, I guess with apologies occasionally to our customers, what, what we typically do is we, we invest heavily in scaling, making things really fast, right? And, and we improve this stuff. And then what inevitably happens is that over the course of about six months or so, you're seeing a doubling, tripling, quadrupling of data volumes and something that was blazingly fast and you were happy with, you know, suddenly is, is starting to, to get a bit shaky and you're back in there, you know, improving the performance. Right. And one of the things that we've, we've sort of done is that while we do spend a lot of time, and, and an example of this is, you know, we spend a lot of time talking about security practices. I think for a long time now, people have understood that we need to be more mindful of security. And so we're baking those concepts into, you know, um, team training, ex whether that's external or internal, um, that sort of thing. We're actually finding that we're having to also bake in the performance mindset. You know, everybody loves to to roll out the, you know, performance optimization, you know, too early is the root of all evil and, and whatnot. In our business, it's kind of like, no, we're, we're always on the treadmill. We're always having to accelerate and try and deal with more more data coming through. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. it's a challenge. And this actually, it's, it's, it's expounded by the impact actually of microservices because what we're seeing with some customers is that one service goes down and so many things are talking to it. It's mm. not like you generate an error. That can be the that can be often the critical piece of infrastructure that suddenly every single request has an error, you know, um, and and that that can become huge volumes of data. And so we've really focused on that performance in particular right up front, uh, the API level, how we then deal with queuing, how fast we can then process it, how we can horizontally scale that processing pipeline, are our data stores horizontally scalable, all of that sort of stuff. That leads to so many other questions I could I could ask. But JD, I want to finish our discussion right here because I think it's a perfect place to end talking about the future of these endless, kind of this endless uh, horizon of, uh, you know, increasing amount of data. But that's that seems that that's just your game and the game you've been in for a while. So it sounds like it's just part of it for you guys. But we'll be we're going to be watching this space on how. We do monitor, you know, how errors are monitored and how you think about them in the context of larger, you know, frames of reference, such as, you know, distributing across, you know, any number of nodes. So, GD, yep. thank you very much for taking the time and congratulations with this new, uh, this new APM product. Really appreciate it, Alex. Thank you very much for having me on. Great. We'll talk again soon. Awesome. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Listen to more episodes of the New Stack Makers at the newstack.io slash podcast. Please rate and review us on iTunes, like us on YouTube, and follow us on SoundCloud. Thanks for listening and see you next time.